You've probably had a character come to mind before, something like Orlag the Orc Destroyer, and wondered if it could be fleshed out with a little help from AI, only to find that ChatGPT doesn't like destroyers too much, and finagling with it will only get you so far. Denied. This is where novel AI can come into play, right? One of the most well-known text gens can help you make those freaky ideas come to life, because we all know what you're really trying to make. Now you're looking at a blank page of a new story, looking through the sidebar to try and figure out what all these settings do and what they mean, and it's probably a whole lot of words you've never seen before. I mean, they've got sliders, bits and bobs, and I'm sure you aren't just wanting to head back to school to learn how to make a character. So now before we get into it, this isn't going to be the most intricate guide, it's going to be what you need to get in and make a character for yourself with a new story. And I'll be honest, a lot of these settings are really just for the extra points of the story, or like if you want to tinker and have more control over your story, and they aren't necessary to really get in there and get stuff done, which will save you a lot of heartache. Just about any good story starts with a good prompt, okay? That's where we're going to start, and that's where you need to sort of think about what you're going to do with your story a little bit jumping in yeah you can just jump in and sort of get it going somewhere but then again it's creative but it's not like going to just write up something right off the bat i mean if you give it nothing it's gonna give you something it's just not gonna be like overly grand okay if you do have an idea though you can really get something going right off the bat. A good prompt will allow you to just run through it and have a great time. So now, when I say prompt, I mean the beginning paragraph or so maybe of your story. This is where you're going to use an idea that you've come up with, maybe just a character, set up the setting, set up the, uh, you know, like genre, what, what, vibe are you going for what are you going for uh cyberpunk-esque are you going for a laid-back western are you going for fantasy uh this is where you'll set up your uh your tents right this is where you're going to set up just something to get the narrative going you don't even need to put in a character or anything in there just you can draw like you can draw from any inspiration you need take it writers an art post anything like that and it doesn't need to be like uber detailed it doesn't need to be the most refined style that you start with and are going to end with you can sort of change it dynamically as you go but this is also where you can impart a good bit of your style what you want or what you want to see in any form right like this is going to be it's going to follow this pretty religiously okay especially until you start getting more and more words in there and i would encourage you to continue adding your own bit of style instead of just the ai style because ai style is a little bland i'm not gonna lie it will be a little less fun if you don't add the human touch and if you do plan on using this to make anything long and or a story then the human touch is definitely going to be needed for some parts, whether it's editing or whatnot. You know what I mean? It's not perfect, but nothing ever is. Even humans need an editor. Now then, just to keep it nice and safe for YouTube, we have a nice little, I'm assuming a fae come to help her instead of like a big bad wolf there to chew on her or something. So once you start getting this flow, and you start figuring out what this is more and more about then you can step in take the reins sort of guide it where you want to as you can see this has just been done with the ai so far so we can take it in any direction that we want from here but the next step i would say is getting the memory in place to sort of give it rails especially if you've thought far enough ahead and or sort of now know what you're going off of for me this is clearly a red riding hood story somewhat you know it, it's taking a lot of inspiration from it red riding hood a little bit of horror probably and maybe we can make something work with that so let me get a memory going 
that will sort of push us in the right direction even more than just a good prop. So now with a good memory going, we have you know, a good semblance of the story that's going on here. After this, we can get into characters and the actual world a bit more. Let's see. We also have a scene change indicated right here, or a chapter change, whatever you want to call it. You can watch my other videos if you want to see about that. Also, don't forget by now, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, doesn't matter if they're more advanced or less advanced, drop them down below and we'll see to it that either a message or you know make a video or something about it uh the next part is going to involve the lore book and the lore book has a great guide to it okay do not forget that in your sidebar over here you can find the documentation tab which has a great guide to most of the features that are on this side or even over here just about anything in this thing resides there with more context and if you can't figure it out there feel free to drop a comment here so let's get into what i would assume is three characters first we have the big bad wolf uh anna and some sort of fey guiding light now right now this looks fairly bad for anna i'm not gonna lie yeah i'm going here i'll just move up a little bit so that you can see the shade of no return they will do terrible things in that shed, brother. Lies. Okay, so let's let's get them down. Basically, what I'm going to do for the Lord book is actually do prose. Just regular old prose, which means we're going to write them out just like we write them uh, in text. Before we do that, I would like to add that we do have a automatic Lord book sorter style thing that we went over in the last episode and i will bring that in here just to show it off and make it look nice okay this goes by the name sg green pillars it's fairly handy if you don't know what you're doing and just want an easy setup for your lore book bada bing bada boom once you get sg green pillars working open it up open up a new character add a new character and bada bing bada boom here we will start with maybe the wolf i'm gonna do this one right quick and then be back and we can see exactly what we have so now here we go now that we've got it all set up i've moved the memory from here into the sg green pillars format setup so that we can also have it like all combined, nice and orderly, so that it'll put it in order together. Don't forget, if you don't know what this is, or don't know what it's doing, uh, this is basically an, a big organizer, basically. I mean, that's what it is. Um, over on Discord, you can find it, or down in the description below, I'll put it in there. Uh, this thing is great uh, for just getting everything set up. So, I've done three characters, Anna, and you can read them if you want. We have Fey, which is more of a creature oversight. I just didn't have much to go off on exactly what she is. Probably should have given her a name, more so than just Guiding Light. The wolf, which is there. And the I generated some of these with the help of the generate thing. And it came up with a place called Fableton, which is probably a very played out town but i just thought hey that fits you know what i'm saying that fits in for purposes i yoinked it you know what i'm saying we put that in the locations entry fableton is now part of this story all most of these have been put in cascading activation right here which you can enable so that if any of these keys appear in each other such as fableton if the word fableton or the key fableton down here appears in any of these then it will also activate fableton which means whenever anna pops up so does the rest of them anna basically causes all of them to appear at the same time and so that we can have a full lore book like this you have fableton at the top 
big bad next or all three of them they're in a category and then memory just after that with separators in between to separate it from the actual prompt here and then we continue we continue these separators down into the story whenever we want to change chapter or perspective like we did here and changing perspective is pretty easy so all you do is start writing out in the other view if you want you can also type things like uh big bed wolf's pov and it'll probably figure it out now then with everything organized in context like look at how premium this looks right here everything is nice and easy you don't have to think about it much whenever you want to add something new you add it and you continue from here basically is all you need to do is just continue what we're doing you can use the memory you can use the lore book to add your characters the memory to sort of remember things that happened like let's just describe exactly what's going on right now and say that you know you can say uh she was caught by the wolf right keep that up to date and it will it shows up just before it gets into the actual story so it will remind itself exactly what has gone on before so if you keep your memory up to date you keep your lore books up to date and bada bing bada boom you should have a pretty good chance of getting somewhat what you want i'm not saying that these are going to give you 100 percent of the results especially with things like appearance it's not always going to happen you know i mean it's just not always going to happen it's not going to be probably as you envisioned it if you don't you know describe it and remind it a little bit other than that you should be able to finagle it and be on that for this little guide here i have one last tip you can let's say that we don't want her to be captured and carried off to the cabin uh, let's say that we want maybe the fae to show up and intervene and maybe the fae and the big red wolf have had this interaction before maybe she comes by every time he's just captured his prey and she causes a disturbance you know they have a bit of a backstory let's have a bit of a dialogue she intervenes and that gets out scot free this time and maybe the wolf is very mad about that okay let's do that with the instruct and here we go i would say that this is going in a great direction with a slight uh, a slight instruction from us that is exactly how novel ai's instruct is i mean it's what it's good at i wouldn't say it's as comparable as gpt4 at just basic instructs but doing little guiding notes like this with it is such a plus side don't forget to activate it but i think it activates on its own if you've seen my instruct model guide there's also one for that but yeah we simply pointed it away from just being in the cabin like I had tried before and it, you know, just got to the cabin and it got a little, little gory. But here we go. We put a little stop to it and we change up the flow and bada bing bada boom, we're right back on track. And I, th I think it's doing great with the, the interactions here. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted them to have a little bit of a kerfuffle and, you know, just back to back bantering a little bit let's see what we can get out of here but really this is the end of my like ultra beginner's guide a few tips and tricks that combined a few things from the other guides that i've done let's try one last thing and then i'll close out here and there we go the hunt is back on I seriously want to thank anyone that has made it to the end of the video. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm Rince League, signing off.